<laughs> you raise me up? Good afternoon, class. It's your teacher, Mr. Halverson, here at the home of the Rouse School Mustangs. And as you can tell by the tartan backdrop behind me, I'm still down in the secret lair in the basement by the Rancor Pit in the swimming pool. Why? Well, because as I was telling you last week, we were able to pull off a special science edition of Good Mythical Music, episode number six. Now, as you can probably guess by the intro of today's episode, today we're looking at helium. And Miss Norgard and I got to have a little bit of fun with that, but it wasn't all just fun and games, it's science. See, helium does stuff to the human voice. Uh, now, to understand why, we have to take a look at how part of our body is built, okay? Now, in your neck here, we've got the larynx and the pharynx and stuff like that, don't worry about that. But guys, we've got this little bump in here that a lot of us get as we're older, known as an Adam's apple. That's where your larynx is. Uh, with ladies, we don't notice that bump as much. But in there is where our voice box is, basically, okay? Now, inside of that area, we have what are called vocal cords or vocal folds. Now, imagine that your vocal cords are made up of rubber bands of different thicknesses stretched at different lengths, okay? And that partially determines why your voice sounds the way that it does. Now, whether you are younger or older or a boy or a girl kind of de determines how your vocal uh, chords are put together. Now, if you are someone your age, typically the length of yours is shorter and they are stretched tighter, which is why when the air goes through your voice box, it creates a higher sound than say an older person, such as Mr. Halverson, who's a guy, where our vocal cords are longer, but they're not stretched as tightly. They're a little bit thicker, so they vibrate more slowly. Okay, in your voice, they vibrate faster because they're tighter and thinner. And in mine, they vibrate slower because they're longer and they're thicker. They vibrate more slowly. Higher vibration gives us a higher sound. Lower vibration gives us a lower sound. So that's the gist of how your voice ends up working. And once the air is bouncing around in there, uh, it we get a combination of high and low sounds together and we get what's called a fundamental frequency. Think of that as kind of like the middle of the road type of a thing. If you draw a line that goes between two points, that's, that's your resonant frequency, okay? We can uh, follow this black line on the tartan you see going between my right and left fingers. There's this black line that goes like that. Think of that as your voice. Now, depending on how you are talking and stuff, you get these different frequencies that are traveling along that line and gives your voice its unique characteristics. That's why when you talk, I can tell that it's it's you that's talking and not somebody else, okay? So what happens though with helium, helium is actually lighter than what the oxygen is in the air that we breathe around us. In fact, it travels more quickly. So while you may be speaking and talking the way that you normally will, because the helium's lighter, it actually travels faster, which creates a change in the pitch of your voice. So as would be described by my buddy, Josh Groban, he would say that in regards to helium, you raise me up. and that's why our voice sounds higher. Now, what happens though? What happens if we do that to an instrument? Now, obviously like a thing like a guitar or a violin, helium's not gonna have any effect on. But what if we take an instrument that requires air? Well, Miss Norgard and I today tried out that very thing. Check this out. So while Miss Norgard and I are using two different recorders, they're actually in the same key, so they are going to sound quite similar to each other. So let's uh, do hot cross buns without the influence of helium at this point. So as you can see, even though they're, they're two different makes, hers is a Angel and mine is a Yamaha, they're both made in the same key. And as you can tell, we can match it quite well together. 
But what happens if one of us is using helium and one of us is not? You want to do the helium? You can. You have okay. more helium. Here we go. What's interesting there is when the helium is what's coming out to begin with, it really raised the pitch up higher. But then when you saw me take a breath and I had fresh, fresh oxygen in, which was on top of that helium there, then I dropped down to match you. But once that oxygen got used up and the helium came through, you could hear it raise yeah. in pitch again, just like what happens with the human voice. Should we both do helium sure. and just yep. see what kind of chaos it does? Mm -hmm. The helium matched, the helium yeah. matched the amount that we had coming out and then things went wonky at the end. So yeah, uh, it changes the sound that comes out of the instrument. So as you can see, even with a wind instrument, helium, in the words of Mr. Josh Groban, the effect is going to be... You raise me up. Exactly. So. Now, helium is not the only thing that will have that type of effect. In fact, there's a different gas called sulfur hexafluoride. Now, it is six times heavier than what the air is around us that we breathe when we're talking. So its effect is that it drops us down to have kind of a James Earl Jones type of voice. And if you don't know who James Earl Jones is, if anybody's ever watched Star Wars, especially episodes four, five, and six, in my opinion, the best ones, but that's a debate for a different day, he does the voice of Darth Vader, okay? Sodium hexafluoride, six times heavier, will actually drop the sound of your voice down. Because it's heavier, it moves through those vocal cords more slowly than what regular air does and a lot slower than helium. Helium's like four times lighter than what uh, the air is around us. Sodium hexafluoride is uh, six times heavier. So you're talking about a difference of, of 10 in between the helium and the sodium hexafluoride. So... Uh, we've got a couple extra videos here that I'm going to show you at the tail end of this that's going to be a part of today's Good Mythical Music number six playlist. Um, I've got a video here from Science Insider that describes better than what I do, they use graphics as well too, the effect of helium on your voice. The next video we're going to show you where a demonstration experiment was done in the United Kingdom a ways on back, back when I first started teaching, believe it or not. Uh, this is by the Brainiac Orchestra, and they're going to show the effects on wind instruments by the use of helium. Uh, and we see some of the similar but slightly more hilarious things than what Miss Norgard and I experienced together today. Uh, the third one that we've got as well is from the Flute Channel, and they are classically trained musicians. They're gonna be playing some Mozart, but they're gonna show you the effects of helium on the flute playing. And then the last one is kind of a boring-ish one, but the reason why I've included it is because it shows the effects of both helium and sulfur hexafluoride on uh, different wind instruments. A guy by the name of Kyle uh, uh, Foranash um, and uh, his video is showing the effects of both helium and the sulfur hexafluoride on, uh, on instruments, how it changes the pitch and they've got sciencey things and they show you how the frequencies change and everything like that. So yeah, in the words of Mr. Josh Groban, helium actually does 
And so that's all that we've got today. I hope you enjoyed this special science edition of Good Mythical Music. We'll see you again on Monday as I issue the next challenge for the Can't Stop the Music Challenge. And following that, that Thursday, got another episode of Good Mythical Music coming up. So that's all I've got for you today, guys. But before I go, don't forget, first and foremost, be helpful around the house today and every day. Number two, be sure that you give your folks a hug. Number three, tell someone you love them. Maybe call them on the phone, someone you haven't talked to in a while. And number four, I look forward to us being able to get back and finally seeing each other again after this time of education and exile. You guys have a good Thursday.